back like at six the next morning. Okay, guys, so um, let's just pause it there, then we can go further. Um, Facebook, up and running. Um, great, guys. Uh, it's, it's South Africa's internet. So first things first, I'm a bit sick this week, as you can hear from my voice. <laughs> um, so, yeah, but I promised you guys I'll be here every Tuesday at 3. So I am here. And um, today we're talking a bit about where I come from and where um, I've been and how I got here, because that's a question that a lot of people have. And I will catch up Facebook after we close the live feed on Instagram, um, so that so that you guys can also hear the first part. But now we're, we're at um, where well, I just talked a bit about um, where my parents come from and where my where my motivation come from. Uh, so, as I said, my motivation came from my dad had to work real hard four in the morning. Uh, came out nine at night and then he had to work night shift for like six years where he had to, you know, go out seven o'clock when we had to eat dinner and come back in the morning at eight. And I just decided that is not life. That is not how you should live life. You should be able to do what you want to do when you want to do it. You should be able to um, have passion for what you did. In a matter of fact, you should be able to um, live your passion and then monetize that in order to make income from that passion. Um, so that is how we should live. And that is my motivation. That was my motivation from the start to say, look, I don't want this for my life. I want to be able to live and do what I want to do and live my passion and make money from it. So I um, read all the books um, tried all the businesses and just went for it and just learned and just got experience and experience. And eventually um, opportunities meet preparation. So there were opportunities that came across my path um, and I was prepared to take hold of that opportunities. Um, I don't believe in something like luck. I believe in real hard work and dedication and hours and hours and then preparation, preparing yourself. Um, and then when that opportunity meets, uh, presents itself, you can actually take hold of that opportunity um, by using your preparation and um, what you've done. Um, so yeah, guys, if you have any questions, just um, post them um, on the live feed. I will answer them. Um, we're busy talking a bit about where I'm from, how I got here, what's my motivation for what I do. Um, a question on Facebook is, why did I write the book? Uh, Miranir, thanks for joining. So the question on Facebook is, why did I write the book? Why did I write the book? And that's an easy one. Um, as I said earlier, <coughs> my motivation was to become financially independent. Um, so that I don't have to go work 10 to 14 hours a day. And so that I can live my passion and um, make money from it. So as I had these businesses and as I started investing in property... I had all the friends that was like 30 or 35 and I would talk to them about my property investments and my businesses and what I did and they would tell me, yo, Albert, if I knew this, if I knew this when I was your age or when I was 21, my life would have been completely different. Um, so, so they told me, Albert, I wish I met you like six years ago and you would have told me these things. And um, I said, well, why not write a book? There's so many people out there that needs to know these things and that don't know them. And um, maybe I can help them. So the initial, the initial goal of the book was just to enable entrepreneurs um, to become financially independent, to tell my story and to inspire them, to tell them, look, it is possible to become a millionaire at 22. It is possible to do that. And if you just follow these steps and follow these techniques that I wrote in the book, that is possible for you as well. And that was my initial, you know, goal, just to get that out, to inspire the entrepreneurs and to, you know, help people to become financially independent. But at the book launch, we literally invited one newspaper. Uh, one newspaper came and it was the record from the Muet, where I'm from. So I'm from the Muet, I'm from Pretoria, I'm from here. So he invited the record 
And then uh, the guy from the record knew the guy from Pretoria News. And he knew the guy from the Star. And he knew the guy from the Mercury. And Pretoria FM knew the guy from Pretoria News. So then I got on Pretoria FM. And then Pretoria FM is in the same building as 5FM. So then I was on 5FM. And then, <laughs> you know, I got on Tix FM and because and, they saw me on, on Bait Soccer. Because on Bait Soccer saw me in the Pretoria News. So... Um, it was just like everything just exploded and um, I'm so happy it did because I'm getting so many emails and so many messages saying, oh, but your book worked it, it, it inspires me, it helped me um, and it and it has actually making a change in my life. Um, yeah, so Quintus, hey Quintus, how's it going? Quintus is saying... Uh, thanks for that financial freedom. We need it. And I totally agree. That is what we need to do. Um, we need to be able to do what we need to do and what we have to do every day and um, do that, do our passions. All of us have a, a, a special passion, a special purpose in life that only we can bring. And we need to be able to um, have time and have financial resources to do that. We shouldn't have to go to work every day from 9 to 5 and then only come back and do what you have to do in this world. Um, you should be able to... Hey Natasha, how's it going? Greeted uh, van uitsoring af. So, so yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm talking about we need to be able to have financial freedom, have financial independence, um, have our money machine set up to make money for us. So that we can follow our passion and follow our dreams every day and make a difference in, in life. Um, okay, so the question is, why do I still live with my parents if I'm a millionaire? <laughs> okay, that's a good question. Okay, um, so I'll, I'll answer that in two parts. Part one is, last year I lived on my own in the Cape. And Natasha will know this. We, um, I worked in Oudsweling um, on a project there. Uh, great people in Oudsweling. Um, and um, yeah, then I worked there for a year. On my, I lived on my own. And um, I came back last year this time. And I just missed my family. Hey, I just missed these people. And um, um, I'm, I'm very close with my family. As I said in the beginning of this video, uh, we, we came from this position that um, my dad wasn't able to go to varsity, my great-grandfather father literally worked on the road with a shovel, um, my grandfather then drove the tractors, my father was eventually able to get a BTEC. So there was always this thing about, look, we as a family need to grow. We as a family need to go another step up. So me and my brother got engineering degrees, and then, yo, we just... Um, my family, we are very close and um, we, we, um, we just, you know, um, stick together to free these things. So, okay, I'm, I'm deviating. Um, so the answer is, why do I still live at home if I'm a millionaire? One, I love my family and I want to stay with them and I like spending time with them. Number two, it limits your expenses. Okay, so if you have a place to crash... Why pay that rent, that expense, and um, then limit your income? So currently, I'm getting this amount of income, and I'm investing uh, this amount of income, okay? I'm growing, 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 growing. Um, if I had this amount of income, I have to pay rent, I have to, you know, or I go to a lot of parties, I do a lot of things, I buy myself a lot of nice stuff, then I have this amount to invest, Okay, and then that can't grow very quick. I always use the analogy of a rabbit farm. So let's say you have like three or five rabbits, okay? Um, if you leave them in the pen, they will do what they naturally do, okay? They will grow exponentially very quickly. <laughs> but if you take out like two of those rabbits and there's only one left, that one rabbit can't become more rabbits on its own. So the idea of um, uh, generating wealth is to keep all of your rabbits in the pen. Don't take them out to, I don't know what you guys want to do with rabbits, like eat them or skin them or whatever. 
Um, don't do that, okay? Um, keep them in the pen, let them breed, let them do what they naturally do, and they will become more very, very quickly. And um, that's the same with finance. If you keep your income and uh, the money that you generate in the pen um, invested, I don't, I'm not saying keep it in the bank at 6% interest. <laughs> That's terrible. Um, I always say my grandmother gets like 13% 13, 13 on her mixed investment. So um, there's a lot of mixed investments. Um, you can invest in a business. Um, you can invest in your own personal skill and development. You can invest in property um, like I did. And um, yeah, so rather use that money to invest and to grow and to grow and grow than um, spending it on rent when it's not really necessary. Um, to be quite honest, if I had to stay on my own, I would have visited the house most of the time. And um, you know what's great? I have a, I have a what do you call it, monkey, a, a basket, like a, a basket monkey. And I just throw like my clothes in there and then um, it would magically reappear in my closet and it would be washed and it would be clean. <laughs> so um, yeah, Renira, I like your little rabbit there. <laughs> And um, then Harry Gothan, I think. Am I pronouncing it right? Uh, Denida, Denidia Gothan. Um, guys, so yeah, if you have any questions, send them through. Um, I'll answer them. And um, today we just talked a bit about where I come from. Um, hi, Chris Munay. Am I pronouncing that right? Um, so today we just talked a bit about where I come from. What's my backstory? And... Um, where my parents come from and what's my motivation. So if you've missed it, um, Facebook normally posts the video on, on, on my page afterwards. So then you can see uh, the beginning of the video and what we talked about. Um, but yeah, um, sorry guys, I'm also sick. As you can see, um, my nose is like, it's completely blocked up, but I'm here. It's live session Tuesday at three, so I'm here. Um, Motivation, I would say, I, I'll say there's like three points in my life that, that was my motivation. Um, um, firstly, um, my motivation comes from me seeing my dad work really, really hard every day. And um, um, yeah, just, just like really went to work early, came home late, and I saw that is not what I want to do. I want to live life, I want to live my passion and make money from it and to make a difference in this world, you know, um, make a difference for people. And I believe that every one of us have, have a certain thing like that, that you need to give to the world, but you, you, you might not be able to because you need to generate income. So my first one was when I was, I think, eight years old. Um, I was, uh, I was in, in primary school, maybe, no, I was all there, like 10 or something, because it was grade six. It was my birthday, and um, I, I was getting a bicycle. I was getting, like, a new bicycle. It was my birthday, and we went to the store, and um, all of the bikes were there. I was very excited. We walked in. I love uh, I loved how it smelled. You can, you can, you could have smelled the new bicycles, and, um, you know, I was, I was super, super excited. And then I saw this, this mountain bike. It, it was a, it was a diamond back and it was, uh, it had orange in the front and like black at the back and it had disc brakes. At that stage, disc brakes was like the latest thing. Um, so it had everything and I told my dad, that bike, I want that one. And, um, he, he talked to the, the salesperson and I saw that, look, this is not going his way. Um, and the, uh, in the end, the bike was too expensive. So I had to get uh, a cheaper bike. I had to get the, the, the lower version. And um, that was um, my motivation then when I was said like, look, I never want to buy the cheaper bike again. Okay, I want to be able to buy the best bike. <laughs> and um, uh, Murphy's Law, I came to the school that January next year. And the, the cool kid in school had the cool bike. And um, I actually parked next to him every day in, in the Fitzluitz um, because that gave me motivation to say, look, I need to work hard. I need to generate income so that I can also buy the nice bike. So that was in primary school. 
Um, one of my motivational um, points or, or things that, that, that was um, motivational for me. Um, then in varsity, um, I, I would say my second real motivational point was in varsity in second year. Where I was studying, I was doing the normal thing, hustling, um, doing business, being busy, uh, working late nights and everything. And then I came home one day and I just collapsed. Like completely out, just collapsed on the floor. Luckily, my dad and my mom was close by, so they could actually revive me. I had to get <laughs> CPR from my mom. You, you're not allowed to tell anybody, okay? <laughs> um, so, so, yeah, they revived me, rushed me to the hospital. I got an adrenaline shot. Even after the adrenaline shot, my blood pressure was uh, lower than normal. Um, so... Um, basically, I have a, I had a thing, or I still do. It's called. Um, sorry, guys, I'm sick. Um, so that's why. Um, yeah, okay, I'm just sick today, so a little bit of under weather. Um, so yeah, the 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 symptoms is that your the this the the thing that makes your heart beat just go and stops. It's called cardiovascular syncope. You can Google that. Um, so basically, the thing that has to tell my heart to beat just stopped. And it didn't tell my heart to beat anymore. Um, so basically, my heart rate got slower, 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 until it eventually just kind of stopped. Or maybe it didn't stop. It was just like a super slow level or whatever. So I just collapsed and got an adrenaline shot and everything. And the doctor said it was like a mixture of high stress, um, not enough sleep. Um, um, bad eating habits and basically just um, um, part of me like it's something that can happen again um, if, if, if that's, that's, the, that's the case if those things come together again so I basically just decided then like look life is short and at any stage you can just, just collapse and if someone wasn't there to revive me um, my heart wouldn't have started beating again so it's just as easy as that and as quick as that, that, that things can happen. So I just said, look, I need to go for this. I need to do something. I need to make a difference in life. I need to inspire other people. I need to really leave my mark. Um, and that's, that's, that would I say is my second point in my life where I had this intense motivation to do this, to write this book, to go see schools, to talk to people, to do these live feeds, um, and um, yeah, hi Anel, nice to see you. Um, so yeah, that's a bit about my motivation and where I come from. And um, if you've missed the beginning parts of my story, go check it out on Facebook Live. Um, Facebook saves the live video on my profile so you can see everything there. Any more questions from you guys, please send them through. Um, otherwise, I think that's enough for today. It's already a long live session. Um, Sorry for my voice, uh, sorry for my nose, I'm sick, um, but I'm drinking my vitamins and hopefully I'm going to be better real, real soon. Um, great guys, um, um, so yeah, have a great day, I'm going to log off on Instagram this, this side, I'm going to keep on Facebook because I just want to um, do the first part of what I told you guys on Instagram there as well, so it is there for everyone to go really see afterwards. Um, great guys, thank you for joining in. There was a lot of people joining in today. Thank you for everyone. And um, please send the question through. Join us next week um, at 3 on Tuesday for the live session. There's actually a lot of cool stuff coming up, guys. Um, we're going to Hearty as John Forster on the 20th September. We're going to Fixburg on 9 October. We're going to Lichtenberg on 12 October. And we're going to Lady Brand on 28th September. So a lot of schools that we're going to visit. We're also busy um, arranging with like the local schools in my area, Menlo Park, Wonneboom, Westmoor. So um, if you want me to, if you want me to come to your school as well, just let us know. Um, I'm also doing. Oh, I'm also doing a three-week session on Pretoria FM. So for all the Afrikaans people that are there, I do a three-week. Um, a program op um, Pretoria FM uh, so we're going to talk about how to make your passion into a business 
And that's going to be like a three week. It's going to be Monday, half past nine, half past nine on Mondays um, for three weeks. It starts the 11th September. So that's going to be cool. And so a lot of cool stuff happening. Follow us on Instagram and Facebook and see what we're up to and get involved. Tell me about your stories. I want to know um, about your journey and see if we can if we can up that and if we can take it to the next level. Cool, guys. Bye. Have a great day. And uh, thanks for joining in. Francois, cheers. And thank you to you too. Awesome. Okay. Guys, I ended the video on, on Instagram now. Um, Facebook had some problems connecting in the beginning. So um, uh, uh, it, it just didn't, didn't um, do the live feed in the beginning. So I already started on Instagram. And um, I'm just going to catch you guys up with what I said in the beginning. Uh, so the, the question was, uh, what is my story? Where do I come from? Um, what happened in my life? And why am I here where I am today? And a lot of people told me, look, Albert, what you're doing is great. And I see what you're doing. And, you know, but, but what's your backstory? Where do you come from? So I, taught it, I started talking about me. Um, I, I grew up here in Pretoria um, in the Moet. I went to um, law school, Fuerpos Primary School. And then went to Hartius John Foster um, High School. And um, then I went to study industrial engineering at the University of Pretoria. And um, I went to work in industry for a year as an industrial engineer. And then I quit my job and I'm now a full-time entrepreneur. And I run Gazaru, which is my company, where we do web development, social media management and branding. And I also do um, Millionaire 22. Um, so we're busy seeing schools, we're busy talking on the radios, we're busy doing live feeds and uh, talking to you guys. And just trying to get that knowledge out there, trying to get that financial um, edge out there to help people to become financially independent. Um, so yeah, my mom came from Joburg. My dad came from Nelspreet. Um, my dad was not able to study at the University of Pretoria. He had to. Um, he got a BTEC. Um, basically, my great grandfather. I love to tell this story. My great grandfather literally worked on the road with a shovel. My grandfather then um, drove the tractors on road construction and my father uh, got his BTEC and is now um, managing the construction sites. He's an, a residential engineer on the sites um, and makes sure that the, that the actual work that's being implemented um, goes in accordance to the engineer's drawings. Um, so a, a big sense of growth in my family. Me and my brother was the first guys to get an uh, engineering degree. Well, I got mine in 2015. Um, so, so yeah, always motivation. All credit to my parents for always. They always said, look, son, you need to go further. You need to do the extra step. You need to um, go the extra step. Um, because our family um, came from that position and started moving up over the years, over the generations. And... Um, yeah, it was just my responsibility also to keep moving up, to do the next level. Um, and um, yeah, so, so credit to them for always in, embedding that in us. Um, my dad gave me my first book. It was a John C. Maxwell leadership book. <laughs> we all start with leadership. He gave me my first book um, and said, look, son, if you want to become a millionaire, you need to learn from a millionaire. I'm not a millionaire. I can't teach you how. But there are other people out there that can. And so I started reading that book. Um, after that, I did Rich Dad Poor Dad by Robert Kiyosaki. Um, everyone starts with that one as well. And from there, I just continued reading and learning. And um, learning these business techniques, um, business skills, and start implementing them. In primary school, I had businesses. In high school, I had businesses. And um, basically always hustling and starting a new business and getting people together and selling and you know learning those skills and then eventually when opportunity meets preparation i don't believe in luck i believe in hard work and preparation and then when the opportunity presents itself um you can grab that opportunity and make use of it because you've done the preparation so when the opportunity presented itself um, i got into property investment and um, from there just skyrocketed um in terms of yeah, in, in terms of 
my family backstory, that's where I come from. And um, that's where I'm going. Um, so, so yeah, um, that's a bit about me. I talked about my motivations and stuff earlier in the video. And I talked about why we wrote the book also earlier in the video. So watch the video again if you want to see those things. And um, yeah, that's just a bit about me. Great, guys. Thank you for tuning in. And um, we'll see you next week at 3.